hearts be troubled and neither be afraid. I mean, God, when God gave us the fees and even the time to be here, he knew we will encounter the concept paper. We will encounter all these things. We will, we will encounter statistics. I think for me, my, my biggest nightmare for this semester part of it is statistics as well. He knew, uh, coming from a foundation of English literature, uh, mathematics and writing was something that I feel comfortable with. But God knew, even in this semester, I will find statistics. And you know what? We have the courage that we will do well, that we will meet the, we will surpass, not just meeting, we will surpass the, the grading or, or, or the, ex, the, uh, the expectations that are required for us if we only, of course, do our part and entrust everything to God and be found faithful. So I'll sum it up at that and uh, we can believe and pray. Dear Lord, we are grateful for your goodness and your faithfulness and your mercies that are ever present day in, day out. Thank you for you know our coming in and our going out and your watch over us. I thank you, dear Lord, for the 50 of us that are in this um, course. I thank you for our course instructors from Professor Ayuya. Oh, sorry, Professor Ayiro to Dr. Ayuya to every other instru course instructor that we have offered for this particular semester. We are grateful. And Lord, we put our anchor in you that you will hold our hands, that you will guide us through, that even in those particular moments you feel we cannot do it, Lord, remind us that you've given us your peace and it is doing the peace that we sit, do the work, and we know that we will excel. For Lord, time and time again, you've seen in your word, when you ask us, oh God, what is it that is in our hands? And Lord, even as we present our work to you, oh God, may you bless it, and may you show us favor. Wherever we go, and in whatever we do. I thank you for our families, I thank you for the work that you've been given us to do, O oh God. Let none be at a disadvantage because we are studying. Give us the wisdom to be able to balance between family, work, and study, O oh God. Let your glory be seen through whatever that we do in this season. We give you thanks and we praise your name. Thank you, faithful mighty and everlasting God. Mm -hmm. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Amen. Yeah, right. Um, thank you so much for sharing with us. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and uh, Prof, I don't know if you're able to hear us. Are you oh. on? Yeah, you you know, Prof is is um uh, is is on the on the road, so we will be probably be missing him once in a while. Uh, but I'm here to be able I, to support. Yes. All right. Carol, I can hear you. I was... All right. Uh, you, you're done. Maybe you can talk to us about. Hello. Yes, Prof. Are you, yeah, I'm saying you can talk to us about um, where we are going as, as I prepare my, just assembling my presentations on my laptop in the car, yeah. All right. Um, so thank you so much for that. And I think uh, we have come very far and we just want to thank you so much for the resilience and uh, yeah, you know, sending, coming, come through to the topics. It has not been very, <laughs> it has been quite interesting. And uh, Prof managing to go through all these topics other than probably two machos and I think, uh, who was that? One more person. That means 48, 48 topics have already been reviewed and um, 
all of us are ready to be able to move to the next level of chapter. Uh, even today, you can see I have not really sent this out to the PhD students because I have tried to see how we can contain ourselves today so that we can be able to see how we can work on it. But I'm happy that all of you are definitely trying everything possible to write. Can you imagine by the end of the, this semester, you'll be having a chapter one to chapter three. I think that's what should give you motivation, uh, just to write and keep writing and reading and writing. Uh, as you all know that uh, uh, Prof is going to take you through chapter one, chapter three, and uh, therefore he's going to be our your first supervisor. And we are having many supervisors lined up uh, for you to be able to support you. As, we, uh, as Prof has already indicated, we are going to uh, appoint several supervisors to come to uh, support all of you as you develop your chapters and towards your data collection, amongst others. So you all know, uh, Dr. Um, no, uh, yes, I'm trying just to see who, who might unmute. Um, uh, uh, so, right. Uh, so you all, you all know. No. Is someone there? Just trying. All right. All right. Just who? Who? Bunzi? Yeah. Carol, let me mute you. And then, yeah. Yeah, Muku. Um, hmm. I'm also trying to see someone else. Muku, you really want to keep, uh, you, I'm muting you and then you don't unmute. You can. I mean, so all of us, we are really excited and uh, uh, that we are moving on. And uh, now we have four, four, five, five people who need to clear up the issues of, of uh, their school fees because that is going to impact your supervision. We do not want to give you a supervisor and you are still having some pending uh, matters with the finance. So try and ensure that you align yourself in the financial place because this is part of this is part of uh, the supervision process that uh because we're going to pay supervisors and we ensure that uh, they are going to work already you're going through with your first supervisor in all this so you all know dr martin munyao he'll be one of your supervisors and uh will allocate some students you're going to go in cohorts court means that uh, uh uh a prof and a supervisor will be handling a number of students they could be five they could be three they could be you know uh at most five for every cohort and then we are all going to go together. In other words, every if it's Dr. Martin has say Othello and Paula Mata and Chris and Brian, we expect all of us at the same time. We are we are winding up uh, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, chapter five. So we are pushing you together as a support system, but also work within the timeline so that across the board, if Dr. God is having you or it is me or it's Dr. Sitati, we want all of us to have timelines of the same time. Already chapter one and chapter three is being developed together. So we are hoping that that trend goes through until your defenses. Now, when you go back to your field, what is going to be different is what type of design you used, uh, what type of data you're going to collect, uh, your type of the participants and other protocols that are here, the ethical protocols. And we will be taking you through. After chapter three, we will definitely take you through the, you know now how to handle your thesis management system. So we'll ask you to, down, to be able to upload for the defenses, which now after that we will have your defenses and then ask you now to go for ethical letters. We want to move you as a cohort in cohorts and as a cohort. In court means every pair of supervisor is going to ensure that you move together. But in one cohort is that we are having some timelines for submissions and moving together as one. Dr. Sitati is going to be also part of your supervisors and you know how she has interacted with you in the classes. Uh, uh, Dr. Cherui may not have been interacted with you, but it would be nice because since he has come today, I would like you, uh, Dr. Cherui just to show yourself and other others will be coming in next week. I don't know if you have a camera, Dr. Chirui. Uh, it would be nice that uh, they just, you say hello to the class and wave and uh, you know tell them a little bit about yourself. Uh, and as we move to the rest, because they've met Dr. Sitati, Dr. Wandera, Dr. Martin, myself, and Dr. Munyao. Um, Dr. Chirui, are you able to showcase yourself? Uh, Dr. Yu, I'm, uh, I don't have my camera, it's not working for today, okay. but I hope you're able to connect with all prepare it in the due course of class uh, good evening all yeah, of us and I'm, I'm glad i'm excited to be around this place um I've, I've joined some of the classes and uh i'm so impressed with what uh a prof has taken you through together with other lecturers and i believe the foundation that he has laid for you it's only you who will pull yourself back 
the, 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 the zeal and the vigor I've seen in the lecturers, it's only the students who shall pull us back. But I believe uh, what my sister Dr. Ayu has just said, when you're moving together at cohort, it becomes easy. And you don't want to leave any, anybody behind. You want to fly, fly like the geese. They fly together. Wherever is weak, we go and collect them, that person and we move together. I'm, I'm looking forward for an exciting moment to do to, to work with you in this place. As a, I have a PhD in educational planning. My interests are in uh, uh, education for the marginalized, emerging pedagogies, and uh, policy analysis, policy studies, policies that are aimed to lift uh, uh, humanity from poverty. I have a lot of interest there. And I've seen what you have done with uh, I've, I've been able to be in your class. I've seen how you've been able to 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 to, to reorganize your topics. And I, I, I'm I'm really looking forward for a good moment, exciting moment of learning together, of supervising us together, and seeing you accomplish. That would be our joy. And I'm I'm so grateful for the prof for allowing us to be in this place and be able to help you to carry us through this program. I'm hope, I'm, I'm I'm trusting God that even those who are feeling weak, those who are feeling that they don't have peace with them, that God shall provide. At the end of the day, if the 50 of us, the three of us shall be able to wear the gown and at the end of the academic year and say, actually, this has been the doing of God. I'm excited to be around this place and hope we shall be able to go to, to, to interact more even as we move on. Thank you uh, very much, Dr. Ali. All right. Thank you so much. That is Dr. Cherui for you. He will be one of your second supervisors and joining us to supervise you. Dr. Martin, what some of the topics you'll be interested in when we have these students supervised? What will be your area of your strength for these students? Thank you, Daktari, um, and uh, through the prof, thanks for having me join this uh, class today. Um, I'll be particularly interested in uh, supervising students that are, have conceptualized their research around uh, leadership and development in education, uh, policy development, um, um, and education. I'll right. be interested in such topics. Wonderful. So, but you you met the you met Dr. Minyao, and all of you know. Um, just wondering also that you know leadership uh, areas that are around that place. That is where he would be interested more in. You've heard about uh, Prof, uh, Dr. K. God, I don't know Dr. Cherui. Policy matters will be more interesting to him and education. I uh, wonder, and you, Dr. Kegode. Um, what are your areas of interest? You've been in this class, you've had some of the topics that have been presented. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Caro, for having me and everybody having me around. We've been uh, with these students and we are still with them. And Mm. Dr. What Dr. an idea. Yeah, your your network is we lost you a little day to meet. And now, dear students, um I, I come from a ground of pure philosophy for those. Yeah, yeah, my network is a little bit disturbing from a twofold background. The background of philosophy, realization, those who are keen on pedagogies, pedagogical approaches, those who are keen on the interest of the learner in the in the education system, and also those who are interested to critique some policy. That's why in the other class, I was asking questions about does this policy or that one exist and so forth. So I'll be joining students for those who are keen with the policy issues, individual development, and so forth with the mingle of school leadership and educational leadership. I thank you. All right. I, have, I, hope, I hope you've had his area of interest. Those who are going to go around policy, those who are going to go around leadership is probably overall, basically, and uh, you can understand his strength. So you, you can hear a lot of methodology, a lot of uh, uh, areas to do with methodology and ETC. The write-up is more on prof of uh, Lebanon Euro's side to strengthen you as the lecturer, as the other supervisor will come and strengthen the areas of your operations that you're actually picking yourself in. So um, 
I think Prof has begun and uh, Prof, you want me to let you start in? Prof, can you hear us? Uh, who have not introduced themselves. I've had Martin, I've had Kegode. Can, you, can people mute themselves, please? Let me try. Please mute them. Trying to get with this. Um, yeah. All right. I think, Prof. Yeah, everybody. Yeah. Is there any other lecturer who has not been who has not been introduced? Yes. Yeah, so. Um, we have Sitati and Wandera. I think they dropped off. And Susan Wandera is here. Um, uh, Susan, Dr. Susan Wandera, we're just introducing you to the students are uh, now in a different capacity, but as the capacity of a supervisor. Uh, you've been sitting in these classes and you've had students present their topics. And uh, maybe it would be nice to tell the students what will be your area of interest for supervision for these students? Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Yuya. And my apologies for joining late. I was having some presentations with some students, which I've not completed, but I hope to complete in the next short while. I had to join this one briefly. Yeah, um, my areas of specialization. First, I really want to appreciate the amazing class of research methods. I must say that I've also been learning through our um, vice chancellor, for this particular class, I have learned a lot in research methods. I have been one of the students, especially because I really wanted to, to hear about the, their choice of topics and I, especially the focus. I got very excited last week and the other week because of the way they were being focused on the topics for their research methods. And I actually told myself, if I had gone through this, maybe for my master's and my PhD, I would be more different. I would be having a very different view in anything to do with research. So yes, I'm here. It will be a great honor and also a learning experience to be part of the superficial team for this particular first cohort in this master's program. And in my area of speciality, I would really be, um, I know I can cut across the various education aspects, but anything to do with performance in education, anything to do with maybe anything to do with pedagogy, teaching methodologies, anything to do with the teacher performance, maybe professional management, professional development of the teachers, maybe in leadership and policy. Anything touching on the learner, which is very broad, very broad because there are so many aspects that touch on the learner in terms of their performance, in terms of their preparedness, in terms of the subject area of the teacher and performance. I think these are areas I can say with confidence, I will be glad to be part of any of the learners who will be doing any research touching on those areas. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, Dr. Sitati, we were just trying to look through, you've sat in this class for a while right now, and uh, uh, I know that uh, you've been here, you've been listening to our students who are presenting their topics, and I'm sure while they were presenting, you thought, hmm, that's an area I'll be interested in. Uh, I don't know whether you gathered any areas that you'll be interested in based on your strength. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Caro. Sorry, I had a class that I needed to um, attend to, and I also had another meeting with the resident tutors, uh, but I'm happy that I'm here now. Um, I was very impressed with the students and especially with the kind of uh, input they had put in. Uh, many of them uh, had very, very nice topics. And I know we are going to work together as a team. We are going to move together 
And I pray that by the end of the year, we should be done. And so my area of interest was policy. Uh, there was uh, uh, quite a lot uh, in terms of enriching the areas of policy. And that is where I would really want to help my students um, work on and improve on their work. And then um, there was also an area of uh, uh, management and leadership, um, which is also um, an area that I can, uh, you know, uh, look into and help our learners uh, to go through that. So I'll be very happy to guide uh, the students who will be moving towards policy issues uh, within um, their various uh, areas of uh, choice. Thank you, Carol. Thank you so much. So as I give up to Prof, uh, just let you know that uh, these are just some of the supervisors that will be taking you in as your second supervisors. But in addition to this, we have other supervisors locally and abroad coming in to support you. And probably once we have their information on terms of your strength, they will either they will join in the, in the class next time or we'll be sharing with you their profile so that you can understand why they're particularly uh, being chosen. For example, you know, already know Professor Mraithi, we had a lot of people talking about banking and financial issues. I think you'll be coming in handy to be able to help us through that, whereas to do with business, finance and, and banking and uh, other matters really around business, you'll be there. We have obviously someone we called, uh, you know, the Professor Caroline Omlanda, all of you know, she's, she's the Deputy Vice Chancellor uh, open uh, open University, uh, Kenya Open University. She'll be coming in the strength of education policy and leadership. We, we, we can Google her CV if you are interested, Professor Caroline Om Omlanda. We also have Dr. Changach, I think is uh, coming in from um, Moy University. It would be interesting to also see his CV on his uh, profile we, and see what, uh, what we're going to bring in as a strength. We have Professor uh, Winnie Muchera, she's an education psychologist based at uh, Ball, Ball State University in the USA, and probably she'll pop in one of the classes during the summer summer semester, that is the May, to be able to give in a, probably a lecture here and support here, but she'll be coming in in her strength from education uh, psychology and education backgrounds, areas with, to do with uh, uh, psychology vis-a-vis -vis behavior and that. Also, finally, we have uh, uh, Dr. Catherine Kiprop, Again, you are free to check on her CV coming in from a local university around so that she can be able to support in these uh, areas of uh, supervision. We've aligned you quite a number of people and they will be taking you, support you through that. Personally, I'll be interested in the areas of um, uh, behavior, you know, areas of uh, mental health, areas of uh, behavior change among various category of people in terms of leadership policy, but that affects behavior and production of any kind towards behavior. Uh, as a clinical psychologist and um, education uh, background undergraduate, but clinical psychologist in the postgraduate, I think areas of that influence in psychological aspects or behavior change in terms of leadership or policy, whatever, but as long as it's around behavior, that will be my area of interest. Thank you so much for this. And I want to welcome Professor Lebanon, you to take you through. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, colleagues. Uh, thank you very much, our students. Uh, we remember Thursdays and Fridays now will be turned into seminars we will just be reinforcing certain things and then listening more to what you are doing and the challenges that you are having. I, 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 I want you to look at, at your topic. Look at means uh, uh, literally look at it and uh, ask yourself, what is my research gap? What is the gap I want to fill? Uh, this we covered in class, but now we are now turning it into uh, the practical aspect. So where are we and why do we think we are there? So in research, we look at the population gap uh, uh, and the uh, just to look at the notes here very briefly, uh, the seven gaps. Look at the population gap. This gap concerns a focus on a population 
that is under-researched or not adequately represented in prior research, e.g. is your study related to gender? Is it related to race and ethnicity? Is it related to age? Is it related to some demographic, population demographic? So a population gap is the most common gap recognized by researchers. So I, I, I'll be asking you to have this scheme in mind. What is my research gap? Is it an empirical gap? Now that we have a topic, now that we have some thinking around the background of the problem, is it um, is it something to do with the empirical gap? That means uh, you are trying to get data coming out of you that uh, will help support that area. For example, Boaz, uh, the research you're going to do is you're going to look at the chronology, um, uh, the, the whole development evolution of education in Kenya. But you know, there's, there's a very big empirical gap. Uh, if, if you look at the Omindi report in 1964, or you are looking at the Gashadi report of 1965, Koech report or the Ambo report, Mackay's report, uh, there is an empirical gap. The question is, when I look at Ominde and I look at Odiambo's report, the things Ominde asked us to do, Odiambo is still asking us to do. So you'll be looking at an empirical gap, but maybe on population, I didn't want to go through the notes, but um, just note that a population gap is the most common gap and that uh, un underserved populations uh, gives very good research. Just note that underserved populations, like the vulnerable groups, like what Gaki is doing with the dyslexia and, uh, and several others of you, those are underserved populations, forms very interesting. But look at what we mean by empirical gap. The empirical gap is concerned with research findings in prior research that lack empirical research or subject matter that needs to be evaluated or empirically verified. An empirical gap deals with gaps in prior research. Uh, so, so Boaz, in a very special way, uh, we, we are trying to look at gaps in all these commissions in the evolution of uh, uh, education policies in Kenya. But the inner thing, and that's why I'll be very keen with your objectives is to find out why, why, why have we not ever achieved what Ominde told us at independence or Mackay or Koech or Odiambo. So there is an empirical gap. Uh, so I, I, I don't want to see just the the chronology of these various milestones in our education system, I want within us, within you, to dig deep and find out what were, consider each of them as having been some kind of research. What was the gap? What is this uh, constant gap that keeps on telling us to revise? Let me give you the example of CBC. Uh, CBC and 844, the intention is the same. 844 was a practical oriented model and workshops were built in every primary school and agriculture was being done and uh, woodwork and uh, sewing and cooking. 
This is what CBC wants to do. So the question is, why? What was the gap, the empirical gap? So this conflict deals with the research findings or pro propositions that need to be evaluated or empirically verified. I'll be very interested to see how many of you can actually go for an empirical gap. And uh, the empirical gap is the second most common gap recognized by researchers. So there is conflict with prior findings or lack of an empirical line of inquiry. So for example, the empirical gap often addresses conflicts that no study to date has directly attempted to evaluate a subject or a topic using an empirical approach. Uh, please, uh, those of you who are trying to find gaps in past performances, uh, you are advised to read a little more about the empirical gap as one of your tools for your study. Then there is number three, there is the methodology gap. I think I only saw one person, uh, one person. Uh, Carol, have you, do you have a copy of what Kareen has sent me? Do you have a copy? Yeah, I can, I can, I can check it. If you can, if you can have it, I want you to flag it. But the methodology gap, methodology gap. Uh, you remember when I was teaching the problem statement, the, the example of teenage smoking. Remember the, remember the searcher said they want, they want to... use qualitative methods and not quantitative. So that is a method, a methodology gap. I would be interested, I'd, I'd be very interested, uh, my students, in, in some of you just looking at a methodology gap. I saw somebody talk about qualitative uh, approach and I told them, that's fine but talk to us about that under your scope and also when you are dealing with methodology, you will tell me why you're going qualitative. Then there is the knowledge gap. So the methodology gap uh, is, is, is very key uh, this gap is the type of gap that deals with lack of variation in research methods in prior research that could use a different line of inquiry. So you might decide to be, to go the mixed methods approach. You might, and even when you're going the mixed methods approach, maybe you want to do embedding, maybe you want to be sequential, uh, or maybe you want to be concurrent in, in your data collection and analysis. That can be a gap for research. So a methodological gap is the type of gap that deals with the conflict that occurs due to the influence of methodology on research results. And I want some of you, although most people want to do these gaps at PhD level, I would like to see some of you dare and search for a methodological gap. And it, it is a very common gap for, for st studies, but I rarely see it in our African context, or our continent, or Kenya, for example. So you see conflict with prior research methods. This gap addresses the conflicts with research methods in prior studies and offers a new line of research that is divergent from those research methods. Variation. A variation in research methods is necessary to generate new insights or to avoid distorted findings. That's why many of you will go mixed methods. You'll say, no, 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 no. It is not enough for me to do quantitative or qualitative alone. I want to go, I want to create variation 
so as to triangulate my results. Now, the other gap after the uh, is the knowledge gap, the knowledge gap in research. And uh, I saw quite a number of you are going to look for the knowledge gap. And this is concerned with the lack of research on a particular subject. Thus, the desired research findings do not exist. The knowledge gap is a common gap in prior research. And there are two situations where a knowledge gap, knowledge void might occur. So the characteristic, the knowledge gap is very common. And uh, the two conditions are, there are two settings where a knowledge gap might occur. So knowledge may not exist. So there's a gap and you want to give us that knowledge. So knowledge may not exist in the actual field compared to theories and prior literature from related research domains or differing results. It might be the case that the results of a study differ from what was expected. So you are working out the knowledge gap. Then there is the theoretical gap. I think the theoretical gap is here at number five. Again, uh, we, 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 are, we are different in Daystar. We, we are opening up your mind uh, to be able to not just do research, but you should be able to ask yourself, uh, what, what gap am I addressing? So the theoretical gap is concerned with the lack of theory on or conceptual theoretical models for a particular subject matter in prior research. Because there is a lack of theory, a gap exists. So the theoretical gap deals with gaps in the theory in prior research. And here there could be models, there could be conceptual frameworks. Now, this is a very common gap. Lack of theory, for example, if one phenomenon is being explained through various theoretical models, then similar to a methodological conflict, there might be a theoretical conflict. So this is high level thinking when you are when you are chasing a theoretical gap. So I would like to see uh, some of that come in. And here you examine the theory. So researchers and scholars could examine whether one of the theories is superior in terms of the gap in prior research or common occurrence. And the theoretical gaps are a common occurrence when examining prior research on a phenomenon. And you might find that uh, this study was done somewhere in South Africa, but there's a theoretical gap. They were using a theory that doesn't quite bring out the variables of the study. And you say, you're going to this, you're going to use this theory and give us that theory. Then there is the evidence gap. Uh, this gap is concerned with contradictions in the findings of prior research. There are conflicts in prior studies that have contradicted results and conclusions. So there is, there is that contradiction uh, in the evidence and uh, you want to bring it out. So there is evidence conflict, there's contradiction. Uh, you are analyzing the research stream and analyzing the results and uh, you find whether they reveal any contradictory evidence. And then there is the practical knowledge gap. Practical knowledge gap. Of course, uh, since I taught you research methods, you have all these notes. But there is the practical knowledge uh, gap, uh, which I, I get excited about uh, because the practical knowledge gap is concerned with professional behavioral practices that deviate from research findings or are not covered by research. So the practical knowledge gap, I would like to see, uh, let me give you an example. If you work in a school and the school is not doing well in maths, uh, there must be a practical knowledge gap that you would like to subject the teachers of maths in this school to. And that is called action research. So you'd want to get into class. You'd want to see the pedagogy, how they're teaching maths. You like, you like to see 
where the learner is. Is this learner centered or is it teacher centered? You will then want to see how many assignments. You will want to, want to see the collaborative nature of the learning process in that class. And then that is called action research. And after that, you then give suggestions and strategies that will help improve the practice, that will help improve the teaching of maths in this school. So they say it is not a common gap. Uh, and uh, it can motivate research in a new direction. So it is, uh, there's discrepancy and it is the one you're trying to chase. Uh, conflict with practice versus advocated behavior. Uh, how are we teaching maths? Uh, and 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 is this our norm? Is this our behavior? And does it constitute conflict to wanting to get better results in maths? And of course, you'll have to determine the scope of the 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 conflict as it were. So I I just wanted you to ask yourself, what are you chasing? What are you chasing in your study? So put there a big question mark. And uh, when you come to talk to us, uh, there is Boaz. Uh, I've asked one of my PhD students to tell us what he wants to research in and how he's going around it. And then uh, uh, there were two other people. Uh, I'd, want, I'd want to for you to tell me which is your research gap. Because when you know the research gap, it gives clarity to your problem statement. It gives clarity to your methodology. It gives clarity to your conceptual framework, as we shall see in a short while. So that was the first thing I wanted to, to review with you. The other one, uh, which is worrying me a lot, and it's worrying me a lot because I'm sitting in defenses and I'm very worried about understanding limitations and delimitations. I am extremely worried. And uh, it is an embarrassment to me when a student I have taught cannot tell me the difference between a limitation and a delimitation. So there's still confusion between limitations and delimitations. And uh, this is even common with faculty. And uh, the problem is that most of them do not know the difference between the two terms, limitations and delimitations. They either have never learned the differences between the two terms or have learned alternative definitions that further confuse them. However, I think I have found a useful definition and examples to help students and researchers understand the difference between these two terms. And sometimes when I say this, colleagues, uh, I, am not, I am not being uh, dismissive. No, I am just concerned that you're going to get a master's and you really don't know what a limitation that the limitation is. So let me look at a definition. For, these are notes from my book. Definition of limitations. Limitations are defined as constraints on your study based on the research methodology and design. Please. Limitations have something to do with the validity and reliability of your findings. So note that when you talk about limitation, just that, when I see the word limitation in your chapter one, I quickly know that you're going to tell me the limitation in your research methodology and design. 
That's what I that's what should be in my mind, and that is what is supposed to be in your mind. So primarily, limitations deal with the constraints on the research method. The research method you use presents a limitation. And so your results are going to be affected in terms of validity and reliability. And I'm going to expand on that. So limitations are constraints you cannot control in your study. That's why limitations are often defined as being out of the control of the researcher. And uh, I want to emphasize that many of you students do not know the reason for this definition. And a recurring problem with postgraduate students is that they are completely misinformed regarding the true meaning of a, a limitation. Wanafunzi uh, wangu na wasi kwa unyanyekevu mpanue macho na muwezesha kilienu kupata hewa ya kutosha kwa sababu hili jambo sio tu la dharura lakini jambo ambalo ni muhimu sana ukitaka kuwa mmoja wa wale watu ambao dunia itategemea kwa mambo ya utafiti You see, and I think the confusion I'm trying to argue here is because of the generic definition of a limitation. You see, if I do this, if I do this, if I take this word limitation and uh, I, I, I hope I can, I don't know that I'm on the internet, I hope, yeah. Here we are. You see, a limitation is a restrain, is a restriction, is a, con a control. It is a constraint, it is a check. A limitation breeds inadequacy. A limitation causes imperfectness. So your results will not be valid if you don't address the limitation. A limitation is a weakness, is a shortcoming. So, having looked at that, the characteristics of a study in which the researcher cannot control the limitations, and uh, many committees are just confused, even defenses. I've seen that confusion. So the generic definition leaves both the dissertation committee, your defense committee, and the doctoral student confused. And there's a reason why a researcher has no control over the characteristics of a study. It is because you cannot control inherent flaws in your researcher methodology and design. These are the ones. When you allow inherent flaws, weaknesses in your researcher methodology and design. And this is, this is why it is out of the researcher's control. Because if you are, you are coming up with a methodology that is going to decrease the validity of your study, then you have no control from that point onwards. And again, to, to, to emphasize, this is the reason why this is out of your control. Because after you have established a methodology and a design, you, you now go out with your questionnaires and you collect data and what, what. So it is out of your control. So with limitations, your research method and design remain constant. 
So for example, 30 years from now, a researcher who wishes to replicate your study can do so by using the same method, same research method, because it remains constant. A future researcher using the same research method will face the same limitations you faced. These have to do with the means of for gathering and analyzing data. Please mute your your computers. I mean, yeah. Um, and and uh, I just want you to note this. Just note this uh, in this class that. Uh, uh, a limitation comes out of a wrong methodology or an, an, an inadequate methodology or a design. That is where a limitation comes from. And uh, I am taking time on this because this is this is by the way this is what then will make you to be uh, an admired researcher in the world or this is what will make you to be just what you are now and then nobody will notice the difference and I, and I'm, I'm emphasizing this so limitations are the built in limits of the method limits of the method limits of the method i'm repeating this over and over again limitations are limits of the method the built-in limits of the method you use to explore your question if you are thoughtful and analytical about your chosen method you should have no trouble identifying the design factors that might produce inaccurate or misleading data and possibly lead to mistaken conclusions do you see why this is so important? Do you see why we don't have groundbreaking research? Do you see why a lot of the theses end up in the library bookshelf and nobody will open them? Yeah. Because you did not look at the built-in limits you didn't look at those the, at the built-in limits of your study. But if you are, listen, if you are thoughtful and analytical about your chosen method, you should have no trouble identifying the design factors that might produce misleading data, inaccurate data, and then lead to mistaken conclusions. And so that thesis becomes a dead piece of writing in the university's library. So I'm talking about methodology. Another definition of a limitation is that it is a design flaw, a design flaw. Limitations identify potential weaknesses in the studies, research design, and methodology. So limitations tend to act as an anticipator of the study's flaws. And I'll be giving you examples, real examples. Limitations are restrictions in the study over which you have no control. Yeah. For example, your study may be limited to a narrow segment of the population. You want to study them? 
but may be limited in the research method you choose to use. Do you see, if, if you're going to study a narrow segment, a narrow segment of a population, uh, if you're going to study a narrow segment of a population, already this is telling you something. This is telling you something. So what method would you use? If you run quickly and start doing a quantitative study and you're dealing with a small population, obviously, as you go on in that study, you have no control to the fact that the validity of your findings, the, the ability to replicate your findings will already have been determined to never, never meet the threshold. So you want to study them, but may be limited in the method you use. And just note that limitations are constraints outside of the researcher's control and are inherent in the study, which could affect the generalizability of the results, the ability to replicate them. So a limitation is a factor that may or will affect the study, but it is not under the control of the researcher. So it is not like a delimitation. Delimitation, wengine tulisema tutakuwa wajia. That is under your control. Wengine tukasema tutakuwa baringo. Wengine tukasema tutachukua taifalote la Kenya. You have control. But a limitation is a factor that may or will affect the study, but it is not under the control of the researcher. So look at this one. In such studies that use questionnaires, a common limitation is the willingness of the individuals to respond at all. You know, you have no, you have no control. You chose a methodology that will use questionnaires. So in, your, in such studies, like the use of questionnaires, a common limitation is the willingness of the individuals to respond at all, to respond in a timely fashion, and to respond accurately. You have no control. But you see, you are stuck because you chose to use questionnaires. So you are stuck. So limitations are important for the possible effects they may have on the outcomes of the study, and they are not controlled by the researcher. I wish I could stand on the tallest mountain and sing this over and over and over again. Limitations are important because they are going to affect the validity and the reliability of your results, of your outcomes and they are not controlled by the researcher. So limitations typically surface as variables that cannot be controlled by the researcher, but may limit or affect the outcome of the study. And limitations can become a problem for students if they are not specified. So when you discuss limitations, you are discussing the possible and real weaknesses of your research design. And I've said, these are the things that may or did affect the study's validity of findings. So when you are writing for me limitations, hey, when you are writing for me limitations, I expect them to address the researcher's awareness of the shortcomings in their research design and methodological approach to the study, thus adding to the researcher's credibility. So when I'm marking a thesis from University of Cape Town, in chapter one, Ayiro will sit for a long time on the problem statement. He will sit for a long time on the objectives of the study and the research questions and the hypothesis, and then he will go 
and almost stay overnight are the limitations. And I want to see how you are arguing out. Do you know the limitations? And how are you arguing out? Then I know you're a credible researcher. So I just said here, limitations equal to constraints of the study based on research methodology and design. So even before I get into your chapter, I look at your chapters, I will want to see how you'll argue about your limitations. Look at this limitation. Common quantitative limitations, common qualitative limitations. We have agreed the research methodology is a limitation, but you must tell me why that limitation is a weakness and how you're going to overcome it. So the research design and the use of self-reported data, the survey, and then for qualitative, the same research design and use of self-reported data interviews. This is where ukasoro unatokea. Ukasoro wa utafiti unaanzia hapa. Then we have time constraints, time to collect data. Here they also have time constraints, time to interview subjects. The other example of a limitation is the length of the survey instrument. How is the length of the survey instrument a problem? Because if the instrument is too long, you will have uncompleted questionnaires. And that means you're not getting the data you are looking for, and therefore, even if you go to analyze, you already have a weakness in your findings. So this will be the length of survey instrument. Instrument. This is the length of study interview time. Design of the survey instrument and design of interview questions. I have told you, please, don't try and develop instruments, questionnaires. Try to go online and adapt validated questionnaires, validated instruments, because then you don't have a problem with validity and reliability of those questionnaires. Don't, don't try to do design interview questions to go out in the field and they're not validated by your supervisor. Another area of, of uh, a big problem area is sampling design. Huh? So when I look at how did you how did you get your sample? It's a very common question for me when I'm examining your thesis and when you are in for defense. How did you get your sample? So we know for quantitative, quanti remember this is quant, this one, quantitative. For quantitative study here, this one, we know quantitative and this is qualitative. So we know here, the sampling design will be random, will be stratified, or you will use clustering systematic convenience. There will be probability sampling, probability sampling. So when I see you undertake a quantitative study and you're not engaged in quantitative in, in probability sampling or random sampling, I am very worried. Already, the validity of your findings are, are, are in trouble. So that's a major limitation. And then if you are doing qualitative studies, it is purposive. You use the quota of the snowballing and it is a non-probability sampling, non-probability sampling. So I would like to see that. And now you can see why are some of us so convinced about sitting in the space of mixed methods? Because it helps us overcome the limitations. And where are limitations found? In the methodology and the design. 
Another big problem is sampling bias. And here target population constraints. And uh, data collection modality, interview question types, survey questions. And then this one, there is such a bias. Because you, are, you come from North Rift, from our area here, you go with the bias. When you're going to do research on the Koito, for example, the pre-wedding ceremony, you go with your bias. If you come from Western and you're going to look at the phenomenon of circumcision, you go with your bias. That bias, that bias is going to impede the reliability and the validity of your findings. It is a limitation. So you should be able to tell me how would you become, how would you overcome that bias? And then, of course, research a misinterpretation of participant data from surveys. You misinterpret data in your chapter four. And once you misinterpret data, that data comes into focus in terms of validity. When you, when you are a qualitative researcher and there's misinterpretation of participant data from interviews, already we are getting into problems of, of validity and reliability. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot, I wish I could say this until the cows come home. But uh, limitations are comprised of the restrictions implemented by the researcher's choice of methodology. So, these are factors in a study that cannot be controlled by the researcher. So, as a basis for this study, the limitations, uh, the example I'm giving were threefold. The first limitation in this study is instrumentation. If you don't get your instruments right, you have a problem. So, this study used an instrument that was closed and did not have open-ended questions. You see, if you go with an instrument that is closed and there are areas where you need to probe further, uh, then you'll have a problem. The second limitation is data collection. So this study, particular study used aggregated data that was collected from the state in a a publicly accessible medium. And this is limited to descriptive statistics. So you can't use this data for further analysis. And the last limitation is the course. Uh, this was about uh, teen leadership, the course itself. So I, I am emphasizing this, that what I want to see in my chapter one is are you able to bring out the limitations? What are the limitations of using a closed-ended questionnaire? What are the limitations of using a... What are the limitations? And how would you overcome that limitation? So you must be able to identify your limitations. So like this, this example, this study was limited to personal interviews with the participants. This limits the length of data collected and thus has a time constraint as to how much data can be collected during a period of time. So I want to see your credibility. You must be able to tell me one of my limitations was around the personal interviews. Look at this one. The second limitation is the lack of closed-ended questions, which result in data that is not empirically quantifiable. You see, if you don't have closed-ended questions, then you cannot be sitting in the quantitative space. Yes, you cannot be sitting in the quantitative space because your questionnaire is open, 
So you're going to get diverse views from your respondents. And the last limitation is the method of data collection. So all responses are self-reported and the research assumes all answers are truthful. That is a big limitation. So for me, I'll be asking you, how are you going to overcome the inherent limitations in your study that are attributed to methodology and the design? So allow me just to read this example 10.3, or allow us to read this example 10.3, and uh, Brenda King, are you there? Brenda? I hope this 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 class is recorded. Uh, Brian Mwenda, are you there? Yes, sir. Brian is here. Yeah, Brian, yeah. help me go through example 10. Please. All right. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Um, limitations commonly focus on the internal and external validity of the study. Internal validity addresses the rigorous conduct of the study, while external validity focuses on the applicability of the findings to larger populations, and to bracket generalization. Limitations are inherent limits in the research methodology and research design. These areas make the study a scientifically rigorous investigation. The following limitations are present in this study. The first limitation is the methodology. This Sorry, study... Uh, uh, this is Brenda. I was just getting into the house. No, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, we'll call you later. Go ahead, uh, Brian. Uh, the the yes, first limitation is the methodology. This study uses a survey design as a basis for research. This is a limitation because the survey questions may not collect all the necessary data. To minimize the limitation of the methodology, the researcher will collect as much data as possible to have an excellent representation of the population. The second Please limitation... Call. Yeah, thank you. Just for, yeah. This is how I would like to see arguments in my chapter one from my master's and PhD students. So when you use a survey design as a basis for research, why is this a limitation? It is a limitation because the survey equations may not collect all the necessary data. And so how do you overcome the limitation of the methodology? You have to collect as much data as possible to have an excellent representation of the population. I'm saying this, one of the areas we zoom in is the area of limitation because when somebody articulates limitations they are they are telling me that there are issues around methodology and design or there are inherent limits so for me how do i overcome the fact that i'm doing a survey design and i know that a survey design may not collect all the necessary data, I must make sure that I collect as much data as possible. When you write this, when I see this written, this one, just this paragraph like this, oh, you are beyond a PhD. You are beyond a PhD. You are the person Africa is looking for. Brian, go on. The second limitation is one of time constraint. Employees may not understand the survey questions because of time constraints. 
as the survey has too many questions. To minimize the time constraint, the researcher will provide the necessary time to collect the data. Yeah. And, and it's, it, <laughs> it looks very obvious, but you know, you will not go into this if you're not grounded in your research methods. Yeah, you'll hear very floating, floating and fleeting statements around time constraint. Question? Yes. Uh, professor, when, when you identify a limitation and you yourself, you also offer a way to mitigate the limitation, does it not cease being a limitation then? No, it can't. We have nothing. We have no control. Good question. Is that Brian? Yes. Yeah, good question. But we have, we have, remember, we have no control on limitations. They are inherent in our methodology and design. So all, all we are trying to do is to mitigate is to reduce okay yes the, the impact they'll have on our results right yes it's gone yes uh, the that... okay i also had a question related to... yes boy sorry yeah go ahead yes uh particularly i think the example you gave uh, of uh the mm limitation when one uses the interview methods, the misinterpretation yeah. of data from mm. the interviews. Um, yes, yeah. this, this still remains a limitation, even if you do understand that you're likely to misinterpret data and then uh, try to see how uh, necessary skills that would enable you to capture for example, you may use uh, the tools that are appropriate to capture the interviews, which you can go mm -hmm. over and over again to try and get the right interpretation. Uh, that would still yeah. remain just uh, a limitation. That is the question I wanted to ask. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And, and you see, you see, boys, good question. When you know that interviews, my interview schedule is going to be a major limitation, then you expose it to several experts. You, you, you go to knowledge-rich informants around that area and begin to ask them, if I ask this question, will I be getting the expected answer? Yeah, I agree with what you're saying, but you see, we want to minimize that limitation. So I would want to hear this argument in your chapter one under limitations. Mwenda, carry on. Excuse me, Prof. Yeah, go ahead, Obadia. Um, yeah, I, I have a concern. Assuming that you're working in a, in a, in a, in a company that, is, mm. that majors in policy, and then uh, you as a researcher, mm. You're going to the field, and uh, lo and behold, this is the data that you're coming up with, and uh, you present that um, in the design, maybe uh, some of uh, the way uh, we get from the example that um, uh, maybe some people or some participant may not have finished uh, uh, the answering the questionnaire because it was too long. How would this now mm. affect the design and implementation of uh, of uh, of uh, the uh, the policies. Uh, secondly, can uh, a researcher now use uh, these limitations uh, in uh, uh, as uh, Obadia, just pause there. How will this then influence? Do you, do you see what I'm saying? How 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 does the World Bank or UNESCO or the Kenya government? or Kenya, Kenya uh, Innovation Agency, it receives 100 proposals bidding for a consultancy. How do they end up picking the one or two, and then they bring them in for oral interview? It is precisely what you, you have just said. 
Yes, because if we don't if we don't get it right in methodology and design, then the findings will not be valid. Then nobody is going to put their money in such a study. So what are we saying? Muzigo wetu kama watafiti ni kupunguza ile hali ya kutoamini matokeo yetu. And people will be looking to see how did they overcome? How did she overcome? How did this consultancy firm overcome the limitations? Are you going to completely expand the limitations? Of course not. Because this is not part of you. You have no control. Uh, you, <laughs> you have no control. And I really want you to expand your minds here, being uh, students at philosophical level. You have no control. You have already given us the design and the methodology and the methods. Othello. I saw your hand up. Or not. Doctor, yes, my hand is up. Yes. Uh, what, yeah. are, what I'm getting here is that we are not going to do without limitations. But the question is, how do we overcome the limitations in our study? Yeah. We have to mm. convince you that we have to do A, B, C, D, uh, X, Y, Z to overcome these limitations so that the limitations do not affect our, our, our findings and not uh, uh, significantly ask, uh, affect our findings such that it becomes invalid. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, carry on. The third limitation is that the study will be. Yes, who is online? This is Juliet. Eh? Yes, Otiano, go ahead. Okay, thank you. So I'm asking Prof just to understand. So it means that uh, whichever method you choose or design you choose, limitations will always be there. Yeah, it will be part of your study. Yes, that. That's, that's why, by the way, mm -hmm. that's why when we go to analysis, and if it is quantitative, uh, uh, there is this, there's a, uh, something called, a, I'm sure you've done it, in, it is something called a regression model, the R squared. The R squared value is supposed to be 1, 100%. But you'll find that your R squared value would be, when you get an R squared value in an experiment, in a research that is 0 0.45, my God, you have done well. That is 45%. The R squared factor. What does it measure? It measures the influence of that variable on your independent, your dependent variable, on your outcome of the study. Uh, when I see, when I go and see people giving, I've seen uh, uh, theses I've marked, people giving me, for example, an R squared value of 0 0.85. It is lies, and your credibility will be at 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 stake because that means you're saying eighty five percent of the changes you see in the outcome are due to the treatment or the independent variables. That is extremely high, even in purely experimental experiments. So are we? I'm I'm glad we are getting there. We are now beginning to sit in a space where we know that when you are doing research you are going to confront limitations and this will arise out of your design and methodology. And me, I want to see a well-argued out chapter on limitations. And I'm going to give you some model example after, after we finish lim uh, limitations and limitations and what I want to do today. I'll send you some model write-ups on how a limitation Subtopic should be constructed. Then you stand out. Mwenda. The third limitation is that, is that the study will be held only during the day that... shift. Uh, the third limitation is that the study will be held only during the day shift and the night, and night shift. To minimize the shift limitation, 
the researcher will obtain data from the most population possible during shifts. The, the last yeah. limitation is the instrumentation to be used to conduct the research. The instrument to be used is the questionnaire of the Baldridge National Quality Program Survey with demographics questions added. Um, to minimize the instrumentation limitation, reliability data will be present showing that the instrument is reliable to conduct uh, the proposed study, uh, Morales 2017. Yeah. Uh, so stop there. Thank you. Yeah, stop there. Now, uh, what, what is coming through, uh, my students, what is coming through is that can you search for a validated instrument in the area of study? And then you adapt it, you domesticate it to your study. And you can see here, the instrument to be used as a questionnaire is the Bordridge National Quality Program Survey. So if, you, if, you're, if you're looking at quality, survey you use this questionnaire and then he says with demographics questions added so before you get into this questionnaire you'll have had the demographics you know the qualification the age group the all that academic levels and so on all the, that information then you just tie it to the questionnaire what am i trying to encourage you to do that uh, if you are going the mixed methods way or the quantitative way. Go to Survey Monkey and look for a questionnaire, a validated questionnaire. We validate a questionnaire in terms of internal validity. Internal validity, and you there's there's a statistic called Cronbach's Alpha, and it will already have been established. So look at what he says to minimize the instrumentation limitation. Reliability data will be present, showing that the instrument is reliable to conduct the proposed study. So you must tell me the Cronbach's alpha was 0 0.8, Ma uh, magnifying the instrument's reliability. If you are doing a qualitative study, please design your interview schedule after you have read the literature in that area, after you have looked at the studies in that area, and it you almost see the kind of questions that are asked. In other words, you are you are walking towards the congregation at All Saints Cathedral because you are a believer. You are tending to become a believer. And then you look for the bishops and the deacons and tell them, is this right? Is this, is this, is this? That is how you validate your instruments. Um, I, th I would like to move on to uh, uh, well, just by Florence Machu, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, uh, take us through delimitations. Like in now, now I'm EV. That's why I have I have chosen to punish myself and uh, to to know each of the fifty plus proposals. I am going to be brutal and cruel in how you bring out the limitations of your study. Just like I'm going to be thorough with the problem statement. Because that's 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 the essence of that study. 
Let's go. All right. Definition of the limitations. The limitations are constraints on your study based on population scope. Miles and Scott, 2017. Think of the limitations. Yeah. So I. The... I mean, actually, just um, so I get raving mad. Uh, I'm not supposed to be, but I get raving mad not out of anger. No, I look at myself and say, Ayiro, you taught this person research methods, and they are in their chapter one, they are writing the limitations, and they're also talking about scope. Ma, please. I, I am saying something. It just speaks badly about you, about me, your instructor, and about your supervisor. So I always tell people, the limitations equal to scope. So why are you having the two? Continue. I'll not interrupt you again. All right. Think of the limitations as the boundaries of your study. The limitations are defined as chiefly concerned with the scope of the study. The limitations describe the scope of the study or establish parameters. The limitations also prevent you from stating that your findings are generalizable to the whole population. Another recurring problem that postgraduate students have is with misunderstanding the true meaning of a delimitation. This is confusing to them because of the generic def definition of a delimitation. The characteristics of a study in which the researcher can control the limitations. Okay, why is that? The primary reason why they have problems writing the limitations is because that definition is only surface level and does not give further rationale as to why it is. There is no context. Please stop. Please stop. All right. Yeah. So my friend, why Wajia County? Why female respondents of the age cohort 20 to 40? The delimitation. Why is the study focusing on grades? eight and nine in the CBC curriculum. That is, you have told me the delimitation, grade eight to nine, but why? Why? When I see, I see people saying my study will be in Vihiga district, Chawakali sublocation, and you are in a university. I have no problem. If you are in love with the Chavakali sublocation where your vice chancellor comes from, I have no problem. But why? Why? And I hope from this class we now know that thou shall not think of the limitation other than saying it is actually the scope. And normally I like I like the subtitle limitations and delimitations. And I see that in PhDs. Then down the line, I see scope of the study. I cry. Carry on. Just go back to the sentence, uh, Matthew. Go back, uh, start again. Uh, the the primary, primary reason. All right. Yeah. The primary reason why they have problems writing the limitations is because that definition is only surface level and does not give further rationale as to why it is. There is no context behind the definition. So Thank again. You. Carry on. Okay. So again, postgraduate students often do their limitations wrong. This generic definition of a delimitation does not help students understand why they often write them wrong in a study. As mentioned earlier, they confuse the limitations and limitations as though they are interchangeable. This has been a recurring problem 
with postgraduate students. One of the prevailing issues on delimitations is that there is no consensus on what they actually are. Many authors profess different definitions of delimitations. So we have a conflict in terms of what delimitations actually mean. Many authors state the conventional definition of delimitations, that they are within the control of the researcher. Madsen, 1990, Mauch and Batch, 1998. Again, the key meaning of delimitations is defined as factors that prevent you from claiming that your findings are true for all people in all times and places. Thomas and Brabeka, 2000, Jacobs, 2011. Another interesting aspect of delimitations is that they imply limitations on the populations to which the results of the study can be generalized. For example, you may decide to only study males, either because the theory on which your hypotheses are based has not been studied in females, or because you have a readily accessible population of males, but not females. Newton and Rudstam, 2007. Think of delimitations as self-imposed boundaries that you use to delimit the scope of your study. Calabrese, 2006. The fact is that delimitations also act as denotations, meaning as a boundary of the study and ways in which the findings may lack generalizability. In yes, considering yes. this, yes, you should stop there. Okay. Matthew, just a minute. All right. Yes. Yeah. So delimitations are self imposed boundaries. And I hope now you understand that is the scope. Yeah, how far would you go? But you must tell us why you are giving us that scope. The fact is that the limitations also act as denotations, meaning as a boundary of the study and ways in which the findings may lack generalizability. So if my study is in Kenya and I'm going to sample schools in Kenya, of course, I cannot then generalize these findings to the U.S. I can't. I have already denoted my scope. Carry on. Okay. In considering this, you should examine such concerns as the nature and size of the sample, the uniqueness of the setting, the time period during which the study was conducted, and the limitations of the particular methods selected. Gathom, Gathon, 1998. The limitations are the factors that prevent you from claiming that your findings are true for all people in all times and places. For a quantitative very study... Pregnant. That's a very pregnant statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, They prevent you from claiming generalizability across people, across time, and across locations. Carry on. For a quantitative study, these are the factors that limit generalization. For a qualitative study, these are the factors that limit the relevancy of your study to other populations or individuals. For example... Pause. Pause, Lawrence. Yes. Yeah. So, so once you tell me that uh, you are going to study the phenomenon of twilight girls in Mombasa, then you cannot generalize that, those findings to the condition and practices of twilight girls on Koenange Street in Nairobi or in Kisumu. Yeah. That's, that's what it means. You have to limit the relevancy of your study 
to your own population and not beyond that. Carry on. For example, if you study nurses in Nairobi, you will not be able to extend your results to nurses in Mombasa. The point is that many quantitative studies gather data at a moment in time. For example, if a researcher 30 years from now would seek to replicate your study, then they would have to decide what factors would get in the way. The limitations would be those factors. Bryant, 2004. Yeah. When, a when a researcher uses the term delimitation, it means they will point to how he or she narrowed the study to focus on specific aspects. The researcher will indicate how they will narrow the specific focus of the study by identifying a precise type of research methodology, participant characteristics, context or research site, or phenomenon studied during the research, Calabrese 2009. Furthermore, the limitations are further limitations actively put in place by a researcher in order to control factors that might affect the results or to focus more specifically on a problem. Terrell, Excellent. 2016. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Excellent. Uh, I mean, this is, this is, this is what I want from everybody in this class. By the time you finish this class, by the time you're crafting for me chapter one, we have no, we have, Atuna, atuna ma story ingine around limitations and limitations. We know what it is. Carry on. Now, I'll not stop you until we finish because of time. Yeah. Okay. One strong consideration of a researcher is that the limitations are controlled by the researcher. In some studies, it is common to have a delimitation regarding the size or nature of the group questioned. The size might be limited to those working in a region. Size may also be limited by percentage in a field or sector. The limitations help everyone involved think through the design of the study. The limitations are integral parts of the design because they set boundaries. They tell the readers what will be included, what will be left out, and why. March and Park 2003. The limitations detail all the aspects of a study that will not be included. This process is exactly one of walling out those segments that are beyond the subject area to hold certain, beyond the scope and purpose of the study, sorry. I'll take that again. The limitations detail in all the aspects of a study that will not be included. This process is exactly one of walling out those segments that are beyond the scope and purpose of the study. The limitations inform readers in a given subject area to hold certain basic. Furthermore, you cannot exclu exclude those aspects that are somehow difficult to research. You cannot narrow the breadth of the study for your convenience. You cannot use the limitations to exclude logical and credible expectations. Webster 1998a. You should use the limitations carefully and conservatively. The following delimitations typical of many research studies. A, exclusions related to gender differences. B, exclusions related to socioeconomic backgrounds. C, absence of concern for the size of cities, organizations, utility districts, or school districts studies. And D, exclusions related to years training or experience. Webster 1998B. Okay. Well, now, and we'll stop there. Okay. We'll stop there. Yeah. So the class, you have this presentation, but... Uh, I, I was just feeling uneasy. Uh, and now that's why I told you when we come to discipline inquiry, 
we will be emphasizing what we did in class and making sure that uh, we internalize these concepts. We don't even memorize, we internalize these concepts. So I'm hoping that now all of us know the difference between the limitation and the delimitation. And that uh, when you are describing to me, you will be able to bring out, a look at how beautifully this is written. The following are the limitations typical of many research studies. So exclusion related to gender differences. And I'll be asking you why. Exclusions related to socioeconomic backgrounds. Why? Absence of concern for the size of cities, organizations, whatever. Why? Exclusions related to years training or experience. Why? Yeah, you must tell us why you are scoping, why you are giving us that delimitation. Can I hear some worries, some concerns? Uh, Desmond Mutula. Mutula Molim, Molimu, um, um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to sit in your class and for mentoring me. I'm humbled. Now, I, I, am, okay. I am doing a study typically based on uh, on churches, you know, and one delimitation I am yeah. automatic I'm seeing here definitely is that I'm going to I'm, I'm going mm. to be conducting this survey on churches within Kenya, you know. Mm. That that is already one yeah. delimitation, and and I correctly yeah. say yeah. in that I don't have the joy of time and the reach and finances mm. to go to England to collect data from churches in England. Yeah. Is that correct? Number second, number two, sorry. My second delimitation is I'll be restricted to the Anglican Church and probably PCEA or, or for Catholic Church for that matter. And, and if you ask me why, I will tell you is because the mm -hmm. Anglican Church is where I've got all the data, the access to the data, access to, to the, 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 the structure, to the people where who can give me data. Number two, same with the, the Catholic Church. I, I, I know the people at the Secretariat, and I can easily administer yeah. um, my survey questionnaire, which now is my limitation, right? And, and of course, I cannot yeah. go to the Corino Church, and, and it will be very difficult to generalize mm. my, my information right through to the Corino Church because I just cannot scope. I cannot, my scope will not include them. Would those be correct yes. limitations for me, Mualim? Perfect. Perfect. Number two. And, uh, you yeah. you delimit, you tell us why. Number two. And yeah, yeah. You, uh, this one, you submit that this will have a bearing on the validity, on the generalizability of these findings. So you you as a researcher, in fact, you you are you you now convince me that you appreciate that the space of research is within certain limits and delimitations. Number two, well, my, number two, of course, I'm going to be using my, I'll be using a survey instrument, you know, survey questionnaire, you know, mm. and, and then that is going to be a limitation. Why? Because Mwalimu, uh, I'm, I'm going mm. to mitigate it, yes. By inter by 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 giving as many by by using getting as much as big a sample as I can, but that already I see as a limitation. Number two is mm. probably my the time constraint. You know, you, you know these mm. these people all masquerade to be very busy all and and getting somebody to sit down and fill yeah. a questionnaire yeah. it is definitely going mm. to inter. I mean, my results validity. And reliability will be interfered with because of the time, the time factor of the, 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 the people, busy people have to fill the questionnaire. Would that again be right when I talk of those as, as my as my limitations, Malim? Yeah, I, I I yes, but I'm going to be ruthlessly brutal because you as a researcher should have anticipated the character 
and the nuances around your respondents. And so you must try to minimize or raise the return rate of your questionnaire. That's one. Two, you will then tell me because of this, I then carried out interviews to information rich respondents, so us, so us to minimize the limitations or so us to triangulate the results that then would have greater validity uh, ratings. So I, what you have said is on the surface, but me, I want to know as a researcher, where we come to occupy laser, how are you going to overcome these limitations? Yeah. Remember, we must mitigate the limitations and we must say why we are delimiting. Thank you. Those are, those are good thoughts. And that's the purpose of a, a class like this. We enrich Thank each other as, as we ask questions people are like. Uh, and kindly, Santi, there was somebody kindly, else. Uh, kindly send me the notes, Molim, yeah. if you get the opportunity. I, I will. I will send it. I'll send it. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Now I have two, I have two hands up. Um, uh, two people. Niwa Nani? Nani Nani? Sam Nyabere. Helen here. Okay, Sam. Sam and yeah. then uh, Helen. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to give a very quick description of. Uh, what I'm currently involved in, and, and you shed yes. some light on, on how that relates to uh, what we are dealing with currently. We, we mm. are at a school where we currently are going through an accreditation process, and uh, I'm responsible for yeah. administering some community survey. And, and uh, I've been thinking about mm. how best to get uh, the highest percentages in, in responses. And I, and I was thinking uh, mm. of, of, you know, blocking out time uh, for students, especially if I decide, say, in the morning uh, between uh, 8 and 9, I have all students uh, seated in their classrooms with their laptops under the supervision mm. of their class teacher to respond to the survey questions. Yes. And I do yes. the same with, uh, with the members of staff. And uh, mm. I'm also planning on... Uh, ensuring that I send the survey links to the parents on a Friday so that mm -hmm. when my students go home, I'll have charged them mm -hmm. with the responsibility of, uh, you know, pushing their parents to respond to the survey questions. Uh, is this what we are likely to do to mitigate against the, the limitations in our own research yeah. area? Research. Yeah. Yes. And you know, what are you trying to do you are trying to, to raise the number of uh, returning instruments. And that is a bigger population. So statistically, the error in that population is diminishing. That's, that's the whole idea. Uh, that's why some people are very critical about qualitative studies. Because they say the error there is is so huge the error term is so huge because the population is so small so yes and you can see i'll be very impressed to to see linkages i mean you're, you're setting up links for the parents you you are uh, very deliberate to ensure that uh, actually these surveys are responded to by students in a controlled environment you are you are trying to you are trying to balloon the population and therefore reduce the error towards your results yeah very good uh helen is it helen yes prof good evening to you uh, yeah my 
my worry or my, rather my concern is on the delimitations that you've talked to us about this evening. Uh, quite interesting. There's a lot to learn there. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm just wondering, uh, there's a text that you had highlighted. And just before that text, there's a statement there that we need to use mm -hmm. the delimitations sparingly, if I got that right. So I'm wondering how many mm -hmm. or what would be the maximum mm -hmm. and the minimum if there's any uh, limit on how to use no. that, the de delimitations. Yeah, you, you see... Do you see why you should use the limitations carefully and conservatively? Do you see why? Yes. You have to see why. Because you, you are trying to be logical and credible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you are going to use the delimitations carefully and you want to use the delimitations which indeed which indeed increase the validity and ability of your finance. Right. So so the, the bigger question is and, and I like the question you've just asked. Can somebody mute, please? Yeah. So, and I really love those type of questions because it tells me you are engaged with the material for the lesson today. Uh, I All I'm going to ask you is why? Why? So please bring in delimitations that help lift the logic and the credibility of... Uh, Esther, please, please mute. Esther, please, can you mute? Please, Esther. Okay. Jen? Jen, are you there? I thought you had carried up your hand. Okay, uh, since you're not there. We will then now uh, uh, move. And, and now listen carefully. We are actually finishing our chapter one. I have one big word in chapter one, and I'm arguing with my Senate of Deista. Deista puts the conceptual framework and theoretical framework in chapter two. I find that very, very hard to, to take because even as you start doing your research objectives, questions, or hypotheses, you're, you're already into the variables of the study. And so I would like to see, as you operationalize the terms in your study, I would like to see you do a conceptual framework. But that conceptual framework is anchored in a theoretical framework. So I'm, I've, I've advised in the graduate, the book that is coming out, that the students do introduce the conceptual and theoretical framework in chapter one, but then now carry it into chapter two to expound on the theoretical models of their study. So what I'm going to do uh, today, I need two people to do presentations. I'm, uh, so I need to, it's already 8.30. I need to, to request that uh, you will allow me tomorrow, God willing, to look at another important area in chapter one. And those are the assumptions and how to write them. And then you'll allow me to very quickly talk about the conceptual and theoretical framework. And then we'll close chapter one. The feelings. I'm feeling 
if I don't cover assumptions and if I don't cover conceptual and theoretical framework and wait for chapter two, our chapter one will be hanging. Boaz, your hand is up. Yes, Prof, my hand is up. Uh, uh, still oh. dealing with the area of uh, the limitations and delimitations. And particularly, I think, yeah. on the limitation side, uh, I'm, I'm just mm. trying still to understand how, uh, uh, as one writes the, uh, the limitations in Chapter 1, uh, and mm. uh, we are yet also to deal with the, uh, Chapter 3, uh, where we'll be dealing with uh, mm. uh, the, the methods and um, uh, even the tools, for example. Uh, um, the relationship, yeah. Yeah. if you could clarify mm. just there, uh, because I realize that you actually require a little bit of the deeper knowledge on how your chapter three would be looking like, even as you mm. deal with uh, uh, this chapter one. So can, can you just clarify yeah. that? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, good question. What I want you to do is I want you to note that uh, thesis writing or a research project, there is what we call threading. Threading, threads, Uzi. So you notice what you do in background to the problem statement, you'll be mentioning certain studies and statistics. When I come to your problem statement, I'll begin to see some of those studies. When I carry you to chapter two, I'll again see those studies, but in an expanded form. That is called threading. Note that limitations and delimitations, we will again deal with them in chapter three, but in relation to the instruments and the data collection procedure. So when I look at what we said in chapter one, and by the way, this limitation and limitation cannot be more than a page of type notes. I want to see it in chapter three, when you are telling me how you validated your tools. Validity and reliability in chapter three. It relates to limitations and limitations. So there is threading. And when I go to chapter four, Boaz, I am going to, after I've given my results, I'm going to do the discussion. The discussion, I'm bringing back the studies I started with in chapter one in my problem statement and in my literature review. I'm bringing them to chapter four to tell you people, based on my findings, my findings either align themselves to the studies or are in, are in contradiction to the studies or they have no relationship to the studies around the variables of the study. So you'll keep seeing this movement in a good thesis. So that should not be a point of worry. Uh, Othello. Yes, Prof, I wanted to agree with you there. Maybe let me just say something to see whether you agree with this. Uh, I concur 